Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, coming at you from Overthrow, New York, in Lower Manhattan, where I'm joined by a familiar face. Eddie Huang is here. Last time I did your show, I took a shit and burned my dick. Oh, fuck. This is no joke. Can I go to the bathroom and yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, that was so painful. I puked in the sink, I took a giant hot shit, and then I accidentally touched my dick, so now my dick's on fire. Well, today, he's here to exact his revenge. We're at Overthrow, where he trains regularly with professional boxer Edgar Santana. Today, I find out the hard way. Who packs a bigger punch? Blair's Mega Death Sauce or the Human Panda? I have a sneaking suspicion. It's the Human Panda. We gotta hit him with the hot shit. I might actually have to exert some energy today. Where's Eddie at? <laughs> I'm here. Where's Eddie at? Where's Eddie at? Wrapping up. Good effort, good effort. You lasted 45 seconds. <laughs> All right, uh, the winner by technical knockout, the human panda. For 30, 30, how many? 38 seconds? 38 seconds? 38 seconds? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything I had. Every, Get off the good 38 else, seconds, Sean. Nothing else. Yeah, yeah for real. Because I was so redlining. Yeah. For those Any of you that are on Raya, you want a good hard 38 seconds. This is my I'm man right here. I'm your guy. <laughs> I'm your guy. Yo, exactly. Eddie, I don't know about you. I'm in the mood for a post workout meal. Oh, I got you. We're going to go eat the spiciest hot pot in Queens. And if you take a shit, touch your dick. <laughs> All right, Eddie, you brought us out to Flushing. Why? Yo, so we at the Skyview Center Mall, and this is my favorite hot pot spot, Little Lamb. There's a lot of lamb hot pot joints with lamb or sheep in the title. You want Little Lamb at the Skyview Center Mall. For the real. Yeah. Also, let's recognize the footwear. Uh-oh. I'm a hot pot in these Gucci flip-flops. You already know. Word, so we're gonna get hot pot, and it's yuan yang guo, which means you get like two soups in it. One's gonna be spicy, and then one we're gonna do the Mongolian herbal broth. Usually, I would do the medium spicy, but because you're here, and we really, we really wanna hit you with the hot shit. Crank it up. We're gonna go extra spicy, all right? And then for us, if we don't want that spice, we got the safe one, but you're gonna eat all the extra hot. <laughs> You know, because of what you've done to the community. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> I thought we were even. I thought that's yeah. what this morning was about. All right, all right, all right. fair, fair, fair. All right, do you want to go medium spicy then? Yeah, let's go medium. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't know how many bullets I have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> extra spicy is not even enjoyable. You know what I mean? You just end up like Coolio, just like <laughs> passed out. So, all right, we're going to go medium spicy, mala spicy broth, and a Mongolian herbal broth, all right? I like to get lamb and beef at Hot Pot. Lamb really has a great flavor with this. So we got the selected fatty lamb, sun volume lamb, prime beef short ribbon since you got the corporate card and I see you got more cameras this year. We am going to wag you beef for 54, 54.99. We're going to spend this money. And then we're going to get into the ofu, right? This is the stuff you need. It's a beef tripe. You want some duck flippers? 
It's good. I'll go with that. Yeah, with duck that. feet. Do some do a little duck feet. Are you guys ready? Hey, yeah. Here we go. Thank you. It's a strong order. Yeah, very strong order. Okay. Oh, I should take you to make some sauces. You want to make Let's sauces? Let's make some sauces. Yeah, the sauces is very key to the hot pot. Yo, so this is where hot pot is won or lost. Okay, all right? Okay. Like, we had a strong order. Right. Very strong order, right? But you it's can like, kind of brick it if the sauces aren't right. Yeah, because they have so many options, and there's also traps here, right? Like, when we're boxing, you got, like, a strong right, right? You had a strong order, a strong right, but I could set you a trap, right? I'll, I'll invite the, the, that right, invite the right, bang, right? Sauces, they set Same some way. traps, yeah. So there's some things here, like plum sauce. All right, like there's a couple things maybe you want plum sauce, but for what we ordered, you don't want that. You put that in your sauce, you're in trouble. So I will give you, this is the classic sauce that people in Chengdu make. It's not too many ingredients, very simple, all right? Sesame oil, right there. Garlic, a good amount of garlic. Oyster sauce, which you may not expect, gives it body. Cilantro, very simple, a lot of cilantro. I get you some scallions. There's your basic sauce. This will go with everything and it mixes really well with the flavor in the hot pot. So we knew we were gonna grab a meal. Is there a reason that we're getting hot pot specifically after boxing or are we just grabbing a meal? The reason why I chose hot pot is because Hot Pot is one of those food experiences that's very easy to catch a brick. Like the sauces are tricky to maneuver, the menu's hard to maneuver for people that don't speak Chinese, didn't grow up in a Chinese background or, you know, East Asian. Hot Pot is kind of tricky to, to enjoy, but it's one of my favorite things to eat. And also like after boxing, you just want to eat protein. Beef tripe is usually the first thing I like to put into the hot pot. Because beef tripe give the soup stock a lot of flavor. It's a quick cook. You can see an almost like instant reaction too. Yeah. Uh, you like tripe? I love menudo. Okay, work. Big menudo like, guy. Then I'm into like tripe. Then yeah. I'll be into tripe. Yeah, I love tripe. You eating it for texture as much as flavor, you know? That tripe is good today. Like real snappy and fresh. We caught him on a good tripe yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, we caught him on a real good tripe day. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, now we just we just going in. Now we're just going in. This is my brother's innovation, right? He likes to do this, a staging bowl. So he stage it in there, then dip it in sauce, then eat it off the plate. And then this is ribeye. We really, we, there's some things here. And so that's lamb, so use your lamb sauce. That's your lamb sauce right here. Mix, mix up the sauce first and then dip it in. It's amazing. Yeah, it'll get better as you go too because the stock will start to sit with your sauce. Tripe, what do you think about the tripe? Yeah, tripe the tripe yeah. is great. The lamb is my favorite so far. This is good today. This is like spicy for flavor. Not like spicy to kill you. <laughs> you know, it's funny that we're here eating hot pot after just beating the shit out of each other <laughs> in the boxing ring. And it has me thinking about all the ways that food media has changed. Food has become sort of a background character in these sorts of experiences. And I wonder what your take is on it. Yeah, I see your, your show is probably my favorite internet show because it is an interview show with the like wing challenge. Because people are eating hot sauce, they're scared for their lives, their bodies are going through something, you get more honesty, you know? And, and that's what I think makes it a great show. On Wong's World, we get people moving, active, eating food, and then they start to open up a little bit more. I, I think the same way, you know? Like, I don't think anybody makes a food show really anymore. I think that they make people shows. Everybody that has come to this format has something that they're trying to say and they're trying to do and a question that they're trying to unravel. Tony Bourdain came to this with a cook's tour and no reservation. And I think in a lot of ways, Tony wanted to find something real. And because of his journey, because of his experience, it makes it easier for people watching to say, hey, like it shouldn't be so intimidating. It shouldn't be so challenging. If he can do it, I can do it. 
you know? I came to the food travel space with a very specific agenda in mind because I had spent a lot of my life as a kind of silenced minority in America, right? Hey, Ching Chong, Eddie Wong, yada yada. And because of my skin, because of my eyes, it really limited who people in my community allowed me to be. But then I came to New York. And New York is where I became a man. New York is where I learned to like really love myself because New Yorkers accept you for all your weird idiosyncrasies. And New York to me was a little like an Epcot. We learned so much from each other as New Yorkers, just visiting like singular blocks of an entire continent or culture in the East Village or in Queens. I said, what if we expanded this and we travel around the world and use food as an equalizer so people can understand for all of our differences, we're more similar than we are different. And that was like the singular purpose of Walt's World. That's what I'm trying to do. And I think uh, that's a big enough question for five or six seasons. Right, right. You know? Nailed the dismount, Eddie. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you, he is a vet. He's done Wong's World, he's done On the Run Ian, and now you're doing In the Wild with Sean. What do you think about the food shows, E? It's, it's kind of a new experience for me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? I've never, I've never saw food like the way I'm seeing it now, you know? I see the food as a different, you know, I see it different. Just yeah, it's like, not just, just fuel it's anymore. Just not, it just exactly. sort of tells a story. Exactly. Just like just like when you started boxing, you didn't really know the science of the boxing. Yeah. Now you more or less know, you know, why you slip in this way, why you throw this punch. All right, so Eddie, the people's champ, uh -huh. was it at all cathartic knocking me around in the ring today? Well, I mean, like, did we you have, have fun to, doing it? Yes, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> You know, I, I saw your face at a certain point about, you know, 20 seconds in, I was like, all right, it's not gonna last that long, so get your licks in, because, you know, Sean may run out of breath here. But every time I spar, even today with you, yo, you get a little nervous before. You're like, yo, I may get punched in the face. I saw you warming up with that right hand. I was like, if I'm not focused, I like could catch a right here. <laughs> Luckily, I did not catch any, but <laughs> <laughs> zero, <laughs> oh four, Cut oh, zero. Four. But like, you know what I mean? Like, I love you, but you definitely bodied me on hot ones. <laughs> a lot of people have gotten fucked up on your show, so I feel like this needed to be you, done. Yeah. This had to be done. For the people. For the people. Yeah, this was for the people. Eddie, thank you so much for bringing me out to lunch. The least that I can do is extend a plug after the training you and after the, the ass club. beating. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Wong, you can catch him on Viceland. Wong's World Season 2, it's back. Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much, Eddie. My man, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. You want to train? Santana Boxing on Instagram. Hey. Thank you.